Dogs have a long history, so questions about how old the first dog was, how he was domesticated, and how he became friends with humans are constantly asked. After a lot of studies about the origin and history of dogs, a recent study finally confirmed that dogs were domesticated from wolves in pre-32,000 year old Europe after finding remains dating back to the Paleolithic era, or also known as the Old Stone Age. In ancient times, dogs were treated as they are today, as hunters, protectors, guards, and loyal companions. Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, Persians, along with many ancient societies kept dogs as pets and treated them so special, the Greeks even created memorials for their dead dogs. So in this episode, the most popular dogs in history and their use in the greatest empires of ancient times. Saluki in the Persian Empire. In the ancient empire of Persia, this dog was considered divine. According to them, this dog was a third wild beast, a third human, and a third divine. It's even said that this can be confirmed by some references in sacred religious books. Some Sinologists believe that in the Bible there are references about this breed, just as they believe in the Holy Quran. This breed is described as a gift from God. This dog was also used for hunting by nomadic tribes because of their speed and sharp instincts. Basenji in Ancient Egypt Attempts to create the image of Anubis, one of the main gods of the dead in ancient Egypt, are said to have been inspired by Basenji, an ancient dog originating in Africa. These dogs became precious companions of mankind, and it's even said that the pharaohs of ancient Egypt accepted this breed as a gift because they were so emotionally attached to their owner. This has led Egyptians to value dogs as part of the family and to pay large amounts of money for these dogs to be carefully mummified, an act widely used to honor dead people in ancient Egypt. Egypt. Cane Corso in the Roman Empire In ancient Rome, Cane Corso inspired the famous Cave Canum Mosaic, which means watch out for the dog, a kind of sign placed outside the house to warn others. But this dog had an even greater reputation and was known as a fearless hunter, defender of the house, and a powerful warrior on the battlefield. To prove this, there are ancient statues of this breed where they appear as guards and companions of Roman soldiers. Besides these tasks, Cane Corso was involved in entertaining Roman games such as bullfighting, tiger or lion fighting, gladiator fighting or dog fighting. This dog was considered so powerful that it's said that four Cane Corsos could kill a tiger or a lion. Norwegian Elkhound in the Vikings era these dogs have a glorious history as the companions of Vikings on their ships during numerous expeditions. This fearless, powerful, and very devoted dog to humans has survived for more than 6,000 years. In Scandinavia, besides the mythological and spiritual connections, these dogs were part of the Vikings' daily life, who considered and valued them as part of their home. Kangal in the Ottoman Empire Thousands of years ago, in the Sivas region of today's Turkey, a dog was selected by nature as a great and powerful keeper of livestock. This dog became very popular with the expansion of the Ottoman Empire, where it became possible to distribute it throughout Europe, from which now many herding dog breeds derive. It still continues to be used in Turkey and many countries around the world as a protector of livestock and as a companion for shepherds. Sharpay in the Han Dynasty. During the Han Dynasty, about 2,000 years ago, the Sharpei breed was created in southern China. This dog had a sad history because it was used by the Chinese working class and gamblers as a fighting dog. So while dog fighting was very popular, this breed was likewise. Thankfully, with the arrival of other breeds from the West, this breed was used less for dog fighting. But during the Communist Revolution, this dog was in danger again because its population started decreasing until a businessman from Hong Kong urged the Americans to save these dogs. It's said that about 200 dogs of this breed were smuggled into America, where nowadays most of the current population of Sharpays originate from this smuggling. Tibetan Mastiff in the Mongol Empire 
It's said that Genghis Khan, chief commander of the Mongol Empire's army, reportedly had about 50,000 Tibetan mastiffs with him when he took the road to conquer Western Europe. This ancient breed, more than 5,000 years old, was created to be a herding dog and a guard for Tibetan nomads living in the Asian mountain regions. Throughout history, these dogs were considered more dangerous than wolves because of their size, great strength, and strong sense of territoriality. Akita Inu in ancient Japan Only in 1927 the Japanese government declared Akita Inu a national treasure, but their glorious history is thousands of years old. These dogs have been popular since ancient Japan, where they served as hunting dogs and companions of the elite of that time. In the Middle Ages, the Emperor of Japan and his samurai soldiers began to use the Akita Inu as guardians of their family and property. But over time, unfortunately, this breed began to be used as a fighting dog until in 1680, when the fifth Japanese shogun, Tokugawa Tsunayoshi, came to power and finally enacted laws to ban dogfighting with this breed specifically and in general too. Illyrian Shepherd in the Illyrian Empire The Illyrians of the Illyrian Empire, Indo-European natives whose descendants are today's Albanians, had a loyal dog to guard livestock and property. This dog is considered an heir of the Molossians, the oldest dogs in history, and is selected by nature, not human. These dogs were so strong that they were used to fight animals like bears and wolves, and also because of their intimidating appearance and protective nature. This breed is still widely used in the Balkan region today. Throughout this journey, dogs have definitely proven that they are man's best friend. What parts of ancient culture do you have in your home? Let us know in the comments. See ya. Thank you.